everybody for joining us again today. We're here with Padres GM AJ Preller. He will be here to discuss tonight's trade for Tim Hill. Again, please utilize the group chat feature if you have a question for AJ. And we'll start tonight with Kevin AC of the Union Tribune. AJ, could you just tell us uh, why the need for this trade at this time and, and a little bit about Tim Hill? Yeah, I think the uh, you know the deal was uh, obviously to get to get a piece that we felt like uh, you know could help contribute to our bullpen here uh, you know this season for the next sixty games and in the future. I think uh, you know with Tim, it's a guy that you know has overcome a lot in his life. Um, you know, kind of late bloomer getting to the big leagues, but a guy that over the last uh, you know few years, both at the minor league level and at the major league level, has been one of the most effective uh, you know relievers and especially relievers versus left hand pitching. So. I think with the Castillo injury, um, you know, uh, you know, with the muscle strain, uh, I think from our standpoint, just adding another quality, quality reliever and 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 somebody, especially from the left side, that could complement, uh, you know, the guys that we currently have. Um, you know, I think from our standpoint, that it, it's somebody we've had our eyes on and uh, ultimately lined up for us. All right. Next up, we'll go to AJ Casaville. <laughs> AJ, how does the performance of some of your outfielders, some of your other outfielders this camp impact your willingness to part with Franchi, knowing what he's capable of? Yeah, I think, you know, it is difficult dealing with Franchi, um, you know, for a lot of reasons. I think some of it's, uh, you know, signed by, you know, signed with the Padre organization. Uh, somebody developed through the Padre organization, just an A-plus person, uh, first-class individual, and uh, having those conversations never easy, uh, you know, in this chair. Um, you know, I, I do think, uh, you know, again, like we, we've have some guys that are, that are performing well and, um, you know, I, you don't want to read too much into, into, you know, the last couple of weeks performance, but, um, you know, the continued development of Edward Oliveras, obviously Tommy Pham coming back from, uh, from the Corona positive, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, overall for us, uh, you know, Josh Naylor, who, who's versatile and can play some different spots, Taylor Trammell and some other young, some young outfield bats. You know, I'm not saying it was easy to move uh, to move Franchi, but we, we we have some other options, and you know, some guys playing well for us right now in these uh, in these scrimmages, and you know, I, I think we factored everything in, and you know, mainly about getting another quality reliever, and Franchi was a guy that they 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 uh, continue to push on. All right, next up we'll go to Marty Caswell. Hi, AJ. Do you think you make this trade without the injury to Castillo, as you referenced? And, I mean, we know what a tantalizing prospect Franchi Cordero was, but was his, inab was his inability to stay healthy also also a factor, as, as well as your, your, your outfield death? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, I think, you know, the, the Castillo injury it definitely factored into, you know, to, to uh, just like probably, you know, for us inquiring on Tim, um, he's a guy we've had our eyes on for a while, though. He's been one of the more effective guys in the, in the game. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, his pitch types, the different look, the different angle, um, you know, the way the fastball plays, we, we think it's going to continue to play. So we like the uniqueness of, of you know, of, of Tim as a pitcher. Um, you know, I, I think in terms of, um, you know, I, I think in terms of, you know, the, the Castillo injury, I think we factor everything. What was the second part, Marty, the, the second question? No, just uh, about Castillo injury, and um, also uh, if um, about how, yeah, about his because I mean he's had he's had this he has some great potential, but it's the potential word, and he and he got injured a lot. Was that also a factor? His inability to stay healthy. Yeah, I think it's 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 obviously like hard to predict injuries, and I think the injuries Franchi's had, like you know, they, they shouldn't should not be recurring type things. But mm -hmm. you know, I, I think the biggest thing with the injury factor of Franchi's just lost the last couple of years of development, and you know, obviously nobody can predict the Corona deal here this year. But right. basically, looking at three years of you know, he just hasn't gotten the at bats that he's going to need. I think he's uh, you know, again, and I think in our situation, you know, with some of the, some of the alphas that we mentioned earlier with Fam and Grisham. Uh, you know, uh, you know, looking like they're they're going to be you know mainstays in the outfield, uh, or ain't going to get at least substantial at bats here this year. Um, you know, it, I think for Franchi was probably more of a platoon role. Um, you know, and, and you know, I guess he'll get more opportunity going to uh, going to another organization. And again, like uh, probably a better situation for him, but but still never easy overall. All right, we'll go up to Jake CBS. AJ, I hope all is going well. Um, when you look at Tim, and you mentioned his uniqueness in the way, you know, his style of pitching, 
Uh, do you feel he's a guy that can face left and right just fine, especially with the inclusion of the, the three batter minimum rule here? Uh, yeah, our guys think, you know, again, like, uh, you know, I think we'll, we're confident that, that Chase and, and Larry and the staff, they'll find the best, the best ways to utilize him. But, um, you know, obviously with the three batter minimum rule, he, uh, you know, he feel like he's a guy that can pitch full innings, pitch a complete inning. Um, you know, he struck out one per inning. And overall, the, the numbers against lefties have been dominant. The performance against righties, um, you know, we feel like he, he's going to be a guy that can get both lefties and righties out. And, um, you know, I think with the rules the way they are, we'll, we'll make sure we use them in the right spots and in the right way. All right, we'll go back to A.J. Castleville. Hey, do we characterize this as a win now move, given that you gave up two guys who might have started the year in the minor leagues for a reliever who's 30 and can help you win – this season? No, I think, I think one of the attractive things, again, like I think pitching comes at all different levels. And, you know, especially when you look at some of these relievers that have kind of been the drop down guys or the, or the guys that, that throw from different slots or present some uniqueness. Uh, sometimes it takes those guys, you know, some years to, uh, you know, to figure things out. I think the thing for us, you know, with, with Tim is, you know, it's from a service time standpoint, he's a, he's a one plus player. It's five years of control. Um, so, you know, we looked at them as a piece for, for now and moving forward for the future. Next up, we'll go to Bob Scanlon. Hey, AJ, I know it's not always a factor, but sometimes when you see what a guy has gone through personally, like what he has to get there, is, is that a little bit of a testament to maybe the, the inner toughness that a player like that might have? Yeah, it was definitely part of the conversation. You know, Pete DeYoung and the scouting group, uh, you know, they you know, obviously, you know, talk about makeup and, you know, Matt Strom is a close friend with uh, with Tim, and um, but you know, you, you obviously look at the backgrounds and, and where guys have come from and how they've done it, and he's got a very intriguing story, and you know what that means specifically for him. Everybody's different from an individual standpoint, but he's obviously overcome a lot. Um, you know, you know, kind of small school, thousand dollar senior sign, late bloomer. Uh, you know, 24 year old getting introduced into pro ball, 28 or 29 in the major leagues, and then obviously overcoming the colon cancer and and, and the, the death of his dad at a young age due to cancer. So uh, he's had a lot thrown his way, and you know we're banking that uh, that speaks speaks highly about you know his resiliency and ability to overcome uh, you know some challenges and adversity, and uh, that was you know that that was factored in when we made the acquisition and factored in in terms of our evaluation. Thanks, Andrew. Again, please utilize the group chat feature if you have a question for AJ. All right, anything else? Any oh, we'll go back to Jake. Real quick, AJ, do you see just kind of more of a broad question uh, opposed to the exact trade, but do you see any uniqueness in this season's, you know, ability to trade and make moves given the, the compactness of the season opposed to maybe a regular 162-game season? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think we've had those conversations internally about, you know, what, what uh, you know, how, how the trade market's going to be affected. Obviously, we've made two trades here, um, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Um, but honestly, I think it's, it's kind of like a lot of things. It's, it's kind of wait and see how everything's played out. And, um, you know, I, you know, before the season, we've got a week to go. So it'll be interesting to see if teams have any more, any more moves over the course of the next week. Um, you know, and I think it's going to be real interesting to see what happens at the trade deadline, you know, in terms of, you know, right at the halfway point of a 60 game season. But, you know, in response to your question, uh, honestly, not really sure exactly how, uh, how things are going to play out from a trade standpoint. All right. Thanks. Go we'll back to AJ Casabo. AJ, I know you don't have an exact answer yet, but how many pitchers are you planning on carrying and how high might that number go? Obviously, with the acquisition of Hale, too. Yeah, no, I think that that'll be the conversation for the next week. You know, I think honestly, uh, you know, I think we've we've tried to use this this uh, this early camp program as, you know, in a uh, you know as like an ability to kind of see see who's what kind of shape everybody's come in, make sure people have gotten innings under their belt, start preparing them for a for a two month season with at bats and and putting some volume on uh, on the pitcher's arms and just getting used to being back on the field. Uh, I think really, you know. Uh, over the course of the next week and starting tomorrow, I think we'll start looking more at the roster and how we want to shape the roster. We really haven't had a lot of conversations so far, and I think that'll uh, we'll start to pick up tomorrow. And that that was we had, you know we kind of looked at it at the schedule and planned it out that way anyway. I think we'll start getting more into the numbers of you know who we want to carry, how we want to break camp, and uh, you know I, I think we'll have a better feel for that over the course of the next four or five days. All right, we'll go back to Marty Caswell. 
uh, AJ, again, I mean, the season hasn't even started yet, but in, in the unique 60-game season, like how many games or weeks do you give yourself, again, to find out whether you're, you're buyers or sellers? I mean, I know the deadline is, is different this year, but do you, is it a week? Is it a couple of weeks? What kind of sense before you know what kind of team you are? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, honestly, I, I think it's, uh, you know, you see some of these projections and, and you know, the standings seem to, are, you know, like in these projections, they're they're very close. You kind of look back on past history to see like where teams would be after 60 days. I, I think it's going to be more of a feel thing when we get into the season, just how we're playing, how well we're playing, um, you know, what's going on in the division, what's going on in the wild card chase. Um, you know, I think we're going into it, you know, looking at that, you uh, you know, there's, I think everybody's going to go into it feeling like they have a chance in a 60 game season. Um, but, but honestly, like, I think we're going to have to get into the year to get a real sense of, you know, Hey, at what point do we, do we know that, you know, we feel like we're genuine contenders or is it going to be a real tightly, you know, bunched up mix all year or teams are going to start to separate themselves. Honestly, I think we're getting into the season and kind of see how, how, how we, we get off and, you know, how we start the season and who else, uh, you know, how, how the other teams in the division play. But, um, you know, I think we're open-minded and just try to figure out, you know, as we get into the year where it goes. I don't think there's any preset notion, hey, at the three-week mark, you know, <laughs> that we're going to know where we're at. And it's kind of just get into it and, and see what happens. So. All right, we have time for just a couple more questions. Next up, we'll go to Adam Klug. Hey, AJ. Between having to actually travel and get to San Diego as well as the intake process, when do you uh, expect him to join the team? Yeah, we literally were just talking about that a few minutes ago. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, uh, again, I think, uh, you know, in that case, I think you'll, you know, I think we expect him to travel tomorrow, but, you know, again, it's each one of these are a little unique. Um, so he's, you know, as opposed to the other players that have been, you know, that, that when I think when we made the Mateo deal, he had to participate in the intake screening and he was coming uh, from Tampa, Florida, I think in this case, uh, you know, Tim has obviously been part of the, the MLB program here over the last few weeks. So he's been getting tested regularly, but I think those are questions here for this evening as we, we dig a little deeper, trying to get the actual details of, you know, when he's going to, when he's going to be able to practice. I know we talked to him on the phone just a little while ago. He's very excited and wants to get started ASAP. Thank you. All right. Any last questions? Okay. Thank you very much, AJ. We appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, AJ. Thanks.